Hello, this is your host Preet, and I will demonstrate a C++ wrapper around a free RTOS task. Now, the reason why I came up with this is because as my applications became more complicated, as tasks wanted to communicate with each other, uh, the regular free RTOS uh, in C was too difficult to maintain. So I came up with a C++ uh, wrapper around a free RTOS task. So naturally it will require free RTOS and a C++ support. Uh, so let's go over a simple task. So I have included in my project CPP task dot HPP. That's where all the source code lives and uh, you can obtain it at my uh, SourceForge uh, link. So here's what a simple task is in C++. Start out with the name of your task and inherit from scheduler task class. In your constructor, call the scheduler task uh, constructor with the name of your task, the size of your stack in bytes, uh, the priority and the pointer to pass to your run. Now what's interesting here is unlike a free RTOS run function where you have to put it in a loop, uh, this run function it's in a loop regardless. So the way this works is in your main function uh, you let go of the older uh, free RTOS functions. You start with scheduler add task and the pointer of your task and you start the scheduler uh, so again, these two wrappers are around uh, creating a task and starting the scheduler in free RTOS. So what happens is after you add all of your tasks and start your scheduler, this run function will be put in a loop. So let me run this, see what happens. And as you see, uh, hello is being printed on the screen. So let's stop this and go over the significance of false. So if your run function ever runs into a problem, you can return false and what will happen is this task will be suspended. So now if I run the task, what happened here is hello will print and because I returned false immediately this task is suspended. The next thing I want to demonstrate is how to init uh, your task or initialize your task and how to call a function uh, right before uh, the run function is put to loop. So there are two functions available and signatures are really important. So you must have bool init uh, with the void and you must have bool task entry with the void. Now this function is called before free RTOS starts. This function is called after free RTOS call, uh, starts. And both of these functions are called only once. So I'm gonna run this and stop the program. And as you see that after tasks, uh, right after tasks are being initialized, my tasks init function is being called. And after the task is created and the scheduler is started, then we get a call to the task entry only once. So these two functions are provide you with ways how all tasks can initialize one after the other and all tasks, uh, tasks can uh, use the task entry one after the another only then the run function is called. So this demonstrates how to initialize and run a task. Let's go into advanced mode where one task can communicate with another task. So what I have here now is a TX task that will send an item over to the queue. So the way you can share a queue handle is let's create a queue. So I'll call it int queue. Uh, 
and I'm going to create an int queue with one item uh, in depth and size of integer, of course. So this handle has to be shared, and the way you can do that is you can say add shared object, and you can share an object by name. Let's call it uh, int queue uh, handle. And I'm, I'm going to share the int queue. Okay. And I'm careful to do this in an in, init function because before anybody starts to use this, I want to make sure that it's created. So by the time everybody's run takes place, uh, this queue would have been created already. So what I'm going to do in the run function is every second, or let's say every two seconds, what I'm going to do is get my int queue handle. Now you can make this a member of the class so you don't have to get it again because this is the class who's going to create him so you can do that but add shared object basically adds pointers and xq handle is basically a pointer uh, so uh, once we add it then any task can get the object and what i'm going to do here is do an xq send and item to send is some integer and text to a is zero for demo sake. And int item equals to one, two, three. I, I did this here so that uh, I can send a unique item uh, number every time. Now this is basically the TX task. So again, in summary, what we did here is we created a queue and we added it to a pool of shared objects um, by name. So I'm saying, remember uh, this integer queue by this name. And our run task can uh, get the item by name uh, back and then send the item over to the queue. I also have an Rx task. So this task was added uh, like so, just like the TX task. Uh, I don't need anything to be knitted, so I don't have an init method here. But I do need my shared object. Okay, so very little code. Um, hopefully you guys have not lost me so far. Bottom line is we want to send something from one task and receive it in another task. And as you see, you did not have to wear, declare any global queue handles. You can just get shared objects by their name. So this could be your favorite name. So we get the handle by name and then we do an X cube receive on it. So I'm going to compile this and let's make sure that this works. Okay, so the demo is working perfectly. What's happening is we're getting one and two, and soon it was gonna be a three. And the way this is all working is the TX task, every two seconds, is sending an item over to the queue that this guy is receiving and we did this by adding a shared object uh, right here we added a shared object that all tasks are going to share and when you when you say get shared object it goes to a single pool of shared information between all the tasks to get you the pointer back and then using the pointer or the queue handle, you do an XQ receive on it.
Now the pool uh, can be more than just a queue handle. You can also say um, you can also have a mutex. So you can also have a mutex uh, right here. So in the init, you can say create me a mutex, and you can share the mutex by a name. There are other things you can do, uh, and I suggest you to read cpptask.hpp file. It is uh, documented well. And one other thing I'd like to demonstrate is how to ta how to get uh, your statistical usage. So you can also this task can get CPU usage uh, in percentage. This task can get its free stack. This task can get the number of times this run function has been called. And this task can also get a task pointer by name. So for example, let's say we want to suspend the TX uh, task. So the TS, TX tasks uh, name was just simply TX. So what we can do is we can get task pointer by name. And we can get the other tasks, CPU usage, the run count, and everything else. Or we can also get his task handle and suspend him. So we tell FreeRTOS to suspend uh, a task, which requires, FreeRTOS requires a task handle, and our TX task pointer, uh, we can get its handle. So what I'm doing here is as soon as I get an item off the queue, the TX task is suspended. So let's run this and you see that as soon as we get item on the queue, the other task is suspended. So I can demonstrate many other uses but uh, let's walk you guys through the documentation. So the scheduler task at cpptask.hpp has all this documentation, in including the simplest example. And it also talks about the set frequency. I will let you read the documentation on what this function would do. And it also has documentation on how to, what to do in your main function. So let's walk through this class real quick. So public API is the following. So this is the API tasks can call on each other. One task can get other tasks pointer by name. And after getting the pointer, you can call uh, the other tasks name function, the free stack function, the number of times the other task is running, or the other tasks handle function. Now, in the protected region, this means only the task can call these functions upon itself. A task cannot call these protected functions on somebody else. So you have the init function, which is called before freeRTOS starts. So do not use the freeRTOS blocking API in this function. You have the register telemetry, which is going to be covered in another video. You have the task entry, which is called once after freeRTOS starts. And you have this run function here, which is going to be called in a loop. Uh, the set frequency, I will let you read that. There are Q set functions if you have that enabled uh, as an option in freeRTOS project. And we went over add shared object and get shared object. Now in your freeRTOS project, there should be examples as well of all the source code uh, which we went over and uh, you can watch other videos I may have to talk about this. Thank you very much for watching and I hope it helps.